Hey guys, welcome back. Um, thanks for joining me today. Uh, just a just a quick one. Just wanted to go over a couple of little uh, housekeeping pointers and um, points on efficiency with memory usage and how to make the most out of Photoshop in terms of power and speeding it up, really. So there's a couple of things that you can do, um, and some of these may seem more obvious than others, but one of the things that you can check is by seeing how, how much information and how fast your Photoshop is running by having it in the drop-down menu here. You can Some people have it set to document sizes so they know the megabytes and that sort of thing, um, but if you change it down here to efficiency. Uh, obviously the higher the number the better, so 100% is uh, is great. Uh, if you're dropping below below 90 then you are going to see some, some serious um, sort of freezes and it really just taking a very long time to render anything so you want to make sure that you're keeping that as high as possible and there's certainly a few things that we can do to make sure that, that happens. If we go up into the Photoshop preferences and then if we come down here to performance that obviously opens up the main menu. Um, some of you may have seen this, some of you may, may have gone in and changed your bits and done some, done some necessary uh, adjustments but the default I'm not even sure what the default settings were I know I've changed mine so much now but um, I think the default is somewhere around 70% for for this let Photoshop use this is basically the, the, the percentage of RAM that you're that you assign to assign your computer to run Photoshop so if you just use Photoshop um, and then you know not a huge amount else or in one go should we say then just just have it set quite high so I normally have mine set to around 80%. If you're, um, you know, doing video editing plus dragging in stuff from Illustrator and using Photoshop and etc. Um, etc., et then you probably want to have that set to a lot lower, somewhere around 50-60%, just so the other programs don't fall over, basically. So, uh, pretty much, I just have the internet and Photoshop open up at one time, and uh, and that's pretty much it. So I set mine quite high. The other thing here is the scratch disks. So those people who've got flash drives and that sort of thing will notice that everything like Photoshop actually runs a lot faster just because you're using using those flash disks or flash drives or thunderbolts and those sorts of things. Well, those sorts of things will speed it up. But you can add um, ex external drives that will give it extra memory to to write to the scratch disk as well. The other the other sort of main key points here, which which make a big difference in my opinion, are is this is this panel over here. Um, you've got some sort of quick and easy uh, default there that you can change it to. Um, but long and short of it is the tall and thin means that that's for sort of smaller files. So smaller files with lots and lots of layers. So I don't know, maybe if you were a um, website builder or something like that and you had the entire website all in one one document, relatively small files, but lots and lots and lots of layers, um, then the Photoshop itself would actually would actually run a lot better if it's set to set to this. Okay. Um, default somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then big and flat is essentially larger documents. So um, I, I'm, I work on very large files now, um, so especially when you get into 16-bit or 32-bit color, then files get, get very, very big. So I tend to have the cache level set, set quite high. So what the cache level uh, just enables the drawing, really, or the, or the redraw of uh, so if you change something how quickly does does that change on the screen in front of you so if you're for example painting with, with a brush and you see the the paint actually coming down onto the onto the screen behind the brush that's mean that the um, draw rate isn't set set high enough so you, you can you can improve that by raising the cache levels so I have mine set anywhere to around six or seven but that is only based on the fact that you do have probably at least Two, two gigabytes of uh, RAM in there, so that will that that will, that will definitely help. Um, and then the cache tile size. I've tried lots of different things with this, and I usually have mine set set quite high. It's up to you, um, but I would definitely recommend playing with several several different things. So, well, 
playing with several different options and then seeing what seeing what works for you. The other one here, which is memory states, um, so you can have it always set up to a thousand. Basically, these states are every single movement adjustment filter paintbrush stroke that you do counts as one history state. Um, so if, if Photoshop has to store all of those at the same time, then it does become incredibly slow. Um, so if you're quite good and quite quite careful and you know, sort of a, you're going to be somebody that's not going to work in a non-destructive way anyway, if you're using masks and duplicate layers and that sort of thing, you shouldn't really need too many history states if you're if you're careful. And it's it's a good way to train yourself to get into that habit um, because if you start having it up around you know the hundred history states, two hundred up to a thousand, it's just Photoshop's just going to fall over and die pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, I keep mine down quite quite low to around 20 and that gives me everything I need really. So that's some of the key information in there. Um, that will that will definitely keep everything going as fast as it possibly can do. Um, this won't take effect until you actually restart your Photoshop. So that's really important to remember that you can do all these settings in here, but it won't actually affect anything until you restart your Photoshop. So you can okay it and try it, okay it, restart, reload an image, see see how it goes, um, and then keep track of it down here with the efficiency. You'll soon know actually, because that's that, that's what I did. I just changed some things, see what worked for me with, with my piece, you know, with, with my laptop and the memory and RAM and stuff that I had, see what worked for me based on the size of the files that I was using and that sort of thing. There is no sort of, sort of this is the best figures for everybody, it really does depend on your um, RAM, like I said, and also the type of files that you work on. It does have a big effect. So I would sort of recommend just taking five minutes just to open and, you know, close and try a few things, check the efficiency, work, you know, run, run a few filters, see what see what works, works best for you. Um, and if you sort of working on an image and you never see it dip below 100% or 95%, then that's probably that's probably a good a good place to start. The other thing as well that I've noticed with the newer versions of Photoshop is that I pretty much I spend, I do all my work on an image and then I restart Photoshop after that image. Um, I think there's some stuff going on in the background where it saves images as well, so that if Photoshop does crash, it, it is restoring an image for you. But that, I mean, that's that's great. You know, I'm, you know, I'm sure there's been some times in the past, in fact, I know there's been some times in the past where I wish that um, earlier versions of Photoshop had done that. But this time around, it is actually storing a um, like a ghost image. So if, if it does crash or something like that, and then you open it up, you will see uh, a um, progress bar automatically open saying recovering large file. Um, so it is doing that in the background, but I do think that does clog it up quite a bit. So what I do is I just restart Photoshop after every image, every large image that I've worked on, or as we say, like every hour or something like that. So every hour just restart it and open it up again. That may seem like, oh, that's a bit of a pain or something like that, but for me it probably takes like less than 20 seconds, but the speed, the noticeable speed difference in Photoshop is, is big. Um, anyway guys, I hope that was, uh, hope it was something in there for you guys, uh, even if it was just one point to take away. Yeah, definitely have a play with that, see what, see what works best for you. And remember that the changes don't take effect until you restart your Photoshop. No worries guys, thanks for watching. Um, by all means, if you want to know any more tips and tricks, then by all means head on, head on over to my Facebook page um, or over to my website where it's, basically that's the archive of every, all the tutorials and tips and techniques, including lighting diagrams and the such. So head on over there. Thanks for watching, D guys. Take, take it easy. Bye.